Ha! Ha! Welcome back to the Doctor Who Marathon. I'm your host, Mickey Dam, and today we're going to be talking about the Torchwood episode, Something Borrowed, written by Phil Ford. Phil Ford, the writer of Water of Mars, and is directed by Ashley Ways. Now, this is an important story for the franchise, and it is, as it is, Gwen and Reese's um, wedding episode, uh, something which was teased earlier on in, in the series, uh, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, in which uh, we learn that, ja that uh, Reese had proposed to Gwen, and this is her, her uh, big episode. And this is also a very well-known story, but not because of 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 it being a good story but whether but the fact that it's a hilarious story this is um what some would call great meme material um there's a lot of great moments in this um that can be easily taken out out of context and are just just over ridiculous um uh, phil ford was basically tasked with writing a episode for the series that was very heightened, very mental, very just, uh, just very just like, just shove everything in. This is um, torture at its most self-aware, its most ridiculous, and by far the, sh the story bloody is all those things. <laughs> Um, and I gotta be honest, um, because this is the first time I've ever watched this story, I've always known about it. I've always known that this, this is, um, that one that some people don't like, some people do like, but a lot of people just take the absolute mick out of it. Um, so I was kind of dreading, I was kind of hoping that this would be at the, at least funny, and at best funny, but, uh, also as well some really hard, um, great moments in there and um, so I was kind of dreading watching this one and I was hoping for a particular experience in this one and was really dreading for this to be a bad episode and after watching it after doing it it this video actually took me a while to kind of process what the hell I had just watched like I don't know if this video will not do my opinions on this justice. I have so much things going through my head. Like, I don't even know if I'd like it or not. I don't, think I, I don't know if I think it's one of the best tortured episodes or one of the worst tortured episodes. But there's one thing consistent about this story. It is funny as hell. It, maybe not intentionally in certain scenes. Um, maybe... Uh, it's funny in the sense of, of like the writers try and make funny jokes. Phil Ford tries to make funny jokes, and sometimes they just don't land. But it leaves this such a, a vacuum, this awkward energy that um, that leaves uh, for some sort of humor. Um, but the story is self-aware enough to know that uh, the story is silly, it is ridiculous, and it's mainly. Its main priority um, is having fun, just having a fun. It's a special wedding episode. It's not here to tell you anything that you don't know about society at large or anything like that. It's just meant to have a blast of a time. And with that, it is just a blast of a time. Yes, I, could, I know, it sounds like I'm already wrapping up, but and I haven't even talked about the story itself. But it's just mental and one aspect of this story which is one of the main things it focuses on um is one of the things that people either love it or hate it this one aspect i like it i actually do like it sure it um the way it's used in the story is um just all over the place but it's it's done uh, and it gets a lot of focus on it um so Let's kick it to the story at hand, where um, our pre-credit sequence has um, Gwen at a hen party, but she she arrives late at her own hen party as her job was really busy. Her being a torchwood, she was chasing down an alien shapeshifter um, uh, with a very nasty bite. Um, I also I love the fact how despite torchwood is supposed like this is something that actually 
the more I think about it, happens throughout Torchwood, both series. And it's something which, like, it makes, this episode makes me realise that Torchwood as a whole is self-aware and is kind of ridiculous and the whole series is cheesy as a whole. But I think this one takes a top in. Um, uh, uh, Tor Gwen has a gun out in a public restroom. Like, there's no, um, there is no attempt of keeping it secret. It's hilarious how much Tortured fails at being a secret organisation that um, that attacks and hides aliens from the rest of the world. It's pretty ridiculous. Um, and uh, Gwen finds this uh, shapeshifter alien and there's a battle out and she gets bitten on the arm. And this scene is intercut with her at her, at her stag do, which... Um, puts you in the atmosphere that this is a comedy this is full and full full, full and false most a comedy it's for laughs it's for silly as you know she hangs on with her her uh, uh stag party women um characters who i'd like to address never seen before never get seen again or at least i don't think they get seen again i'm not quite sure i haven't there's still a handful of tortured episodes I haven't watched um, in any way, shape or form yet. So maybe they do, but um, that kind of adds to this whole ridiculousness that Gwen just, just so happens to have these friends that will have her, her uh, stag do. And it's intercut with her and her job in Torchwood. And we've never seen these characters before. I think that's kind of unintentionally funny because it makes... Um, because despite this supposed to be like a important, a very important story for our characters of specifically Gwen and Reese, like a special, the special wedding episode, these characters are never seen before. So it does kind of look like Gwen has befriended complete and utter strangers. <laughs> uh, but um, uh, Gwen wakes up the next morning, ready for her wedding day. She gets up, sits on her bed. She looks down and she notices something. And she looks into her mirror, terrified. As uh, she gets up, great um, directing. Ashley Way is uh, very great at, at um, using the camera as little as possible. But always getting some really nice shots. This one is a great example. He shoots, um, um, even Miles, is it? Uh, Eve Miles, yeah. Uh, the girl who plays uh, Gwen Cooper, uh, shoots her through a mirror as she's looking into her reflection. And the camera doesn't move, but she gets up, which reveals that she is um, in the later stage of pregnancy. And that is the concept of the episode, that this whole wedding is going completely mad, completely insane, because Gwen is suddenly fully pregnant. And that's the concept of the episode. Now, I think if you can't buy that, if you can't, if you're one of those people who go into this story and go in, that is a completely stupid and, uh, uh, and a completely just utter nonsense storyline to tackle. I, can't, I don't buy this. You're not going to have fun here. The, uh, it has this silly, uh, silliness um, about it throughout the entire story but if you can buy it if you can um, uh, experience like enjoy this uh, very silly concept you're gonna have a whale of a time I guarantee you um, as this 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 is the main focus of the narrative it's Gwen being pregnant with an alien creature on her wedding day and she's now going to explain this to her family um, and her friends and all that um, and I know that Gwen I know the idea like this is like the thing like the the heart of this <clears throat> sorry the heart of this story is in the right place where Gwen is like um, right torture is taken like my life and and there's no way I'm postponing this wedding for Reese do you know how much a wedding costs so we are just going to pretend that we're um, we're having this baby. Um, but again, with the scenes where she has to explain to her parents that she's suddenly pregnant, um, 
uh, well, it's so easy for her because she doesn't see her parents most often. Um, but the way that like Reese's family is supposed to be uh, just accepting it and everybody else has just sort of accepted it um, uh, so easily to the point where like nobody knew that she was pregnant um, is just absolute. it's just a ridiculous concept and again it's all your enjoyment of this story is completely dependent on you buying this premise and yeah that's pretty much a, but it in terms of the main narrative it's just about the having a wedding but uh at least for the most part it's about them having this wedding when uh gwen is having this uh pregnancy um there's some really nice moments with uh recent gwen um i like how jack um uh, where gwen like the first thing she does is ring Reese and it's like you better come here we need to talk about it um uh, Reese doesn't know first of all and he's like um what well, you having second thoughts revealing that she's pregnant and then it's like this is daughter isn't it my god he keeps ruining our lives that jack fella just oh it's so annoying um the concept of like torture and this whole alien thing it's it's ridiculous it's mad um and Reese and Jack have their relationship basically pushed to the brim in this episode where uh they're in conflict with each other as Reese basically blames Jack for basically ruin for almost ruining his wedding and uh, I really like the scene in which um, uh, the torture team basically they uh, give Gwen the opportunity to get this thing out of her have this surgery thing and and she'll be out in a few days so they have to postpone the wedding and um, Gwen is like no we're not but Reese is actually his first thought says I just want to see you safe. I just want to see you uh, healthy. So we can... Don't worry about the money. We will think about the money about the other time. We need to get you healthy. We need to get you better. Uh, but Gwen is like, no, we can't. Which kind of makes Gwen look like a complete imbecile in this story. You, I mean, I guess you can um, explain it away through... Uh, like her hormones and stuff with the pregnancy um, because you know this is a sudden pregnancy so I don't know how aliens pregnancy will affect hormones and stuff and how uh, and how it affects her uh, her way of thinking but yeah that's just the, that's just the whole thing it's her having a wedding and um, we have some just really ridiculous scenes of her trying to explain it to her parents and her parents kind of getting excited by this uh, which kind of ruins now Gwen's idea because it's like, ah, oh, crap, because now they're expecting us to have a normal pregnancy with a normal baby. And after this, they're going to be, uh, they're going to expect us that we're going to live with this child. Like, didn't think this one through, did you? Uh, but it does, it is part of the plot. Gwen is, is like, bugger, we have thought this through. I can't lie to my family. This is uh, ridiculous. This is uh, mad. This is insane. And she's kind of having second thoughts about their plan of marrying today. Um, but when anybody tries to postpone it, she's like, no, I need this wedding to happen. I need it now because Torchwood has put up, uh, Greece has put up so much with Torchwood. And this story, I mean, I liked Reese before, but this story really uh, elevates him in my eyes. It's one of Reese's um, greatest moments, this story is, as... Um, as he gets a lot of great moments, he got a lot of great characters, and he is just—he is just so faithful to Gwen. It's ridiculous. There's a great moment in which, um, um, basically, the whole pregnancy thing has turned everyone upside down, and uh, the best man goes missing. We'll we'll talk about that later on. Um, and the father is just like, this is a curse. This is. Uh, this is a sign that she isn't the one. And Reese uh, just gets him into his father's face and is just like, I love Gwen. I've loved her with every cell in my body. There is nothing that's going to stop me from marrying her today. You got that? Um, and throughout the episode, uh, people suspect that uh, the baby might not even be Reese's. Uh, which, you know, it's true, but not in the way that they think. 
Um, something as well I want to talk about is that in this story, Jack gets a lot of screen time, despite this not really being his story. Uh, there's something that happens in this story which is kind of controversial and it's something which I'm not a particular fan of. But um, if you've watched my, uh, uh, my later vlogs about Torchwood, you kind of get the feeling of where this is going. Um, but there are some really uh, sweet moments with, uh, with Jack. Uh, I especially like how, because of Gwen's pregnancy, she needs a new dress. And him, him and, um, and Yanto are talking about wedding dresses. And that camp uh, John Barrowman um, talking about wedding dresses. And it's like, uh, I like this one, I like that one. Um, having just a girly moment. Um, and then Owen walks into the room and he's like, it's like oh, no, no, that one uh, was good for, for Gwen. Anyway, um, back, to, back to business, back to work. Um, there's a lot of romantic scenes in this, uh, in this story with Jack and Yanto, which I feel uh, may not, maybe are not going far enough with their relationship because something else happens in this story, which is the thing, the controversial element. Uh, but before I get into that, um, Toshika and Reese's relationship starts to be uh, pushing forth as Toshika basically invites Reese uh, to the wedding. And Reese starts to kind of warm up to um, Toshika, despite you know, the fact he is dead. Now, uh, after this story comes right after uh, the Owen's death uh, trilogy of stories, which deal heavily with Reese's death. With Owen, sorry, with Owen's death, and it is very odd that this episode, uh, this funny, silly episode, comes right after that. But that's another thing. This story comes right after an episode in which one of the main characters tries to kill himself. This show is weird. This show is so bizarre. I I adore it. I just. I love the, the inconsistencies of Torchwood, it's mental. Um, but here it's like, it only gets one mention to this, uh, into the in the narrative. You do see um, Owen's hand being bandaged, uh, which is a reference to when he injured himself in the, in the later episode, in the earlier ep episode, sorry. Um, but he starts warming up to uh, Toshika. They're not in a relationship yet. Um, he does ask her, it's not a date, is it? And Toshika's like, no, but the hint is that, you know, if she asked for it, if she was for a date, he might have said yes. Um, and later on in the episode, they do have a, a dance and there seems to be something uh, ticking there. I really do like this little element because it uh, furthers their relationship just a little bit further. Um, and the fact that they are both know where they stand as well um, uh, just makes it just... Uh, a lot more interesting, in my opinion. Uh, but anyway, uh, before I get into the mental, uh, just the just the very hyperactive element of this of the finale of this story, let's talk about the controversial element of this story, which um, a lot of you might have suspected who have watched this story that I'm not a fan of. In this story, uh, in previous stories, should I say, uh, there has been this hint, this. Um, scenes here and there implying that uh, Jack and Gwen are starting to have feelings for one another and here the relation the, the feelings are a lot basically they're confirmed that there are there is something going on there's this unspoken truth about their relationship that uh, plays a part in the story I really don't like this I find it it's so annoying and I get, you know, it's something which, you know, it's boggled Doctor Who as well, where you have a female character who's this main way person who opens uh, our viewpoint into this world. And they get shown by this male, male character about all this weird alien stuff and the, the amazingness of what they do and stuff. And then because of that, just the sole purpose that they... They had their eyes opened by this one individual. Do they then love them or at least have some sort of relationship? But it's 
complicated. It's, um, you know, it messes up their, their love life with their other partner. And it's a cliche at this point. Like we've had it with, with Rose and it wasn't very handled there. Martha kind of had it. Um, and it's maybe just in fiction in general. Just fiction in general just has this really annoying trope. And it's something that will sadly continue on in Doctor Who in uh, the 11th Doctor era with uh, Amy Pond. But for this moment, it's something I feel like really doesn't work. Um, this relationship does get teased, does get thing, but I never bought it. I never buy it. And... Um, and in those other scenes, sometimes you can kind of retcon it that it's just that they really care for each other as friends. Um, but here, there is no denying it. There's a scene, in fact, where where Gwen is in a room to what she believes is Jack. And she is um, talking to him about this love and this feeling and how... Um, and how she wasn't expecting to meet someone like Jack. And they almost share a kiss. Um, there's also a scene right at the end when uh, when the day is saved, Jack like grabs her and uh, embraces her. And they kind of have this romantic moment in front of Reese. And then Jack kind of like puts their hands together and um, weds them off. Um, all of those scenes just drag the story down for me. Uh, and that's why I don't think I enjoyed it as much as as the people who did enjoy the story as much. That's more of a personal thing though. Um, if you do like uh, Gwen and Jack's relationship or uh, in that regard, or if these scenes don't bother you, you're gonna have a good time. You, if of course you bought the premise of the, the baby, uh, the alien baby pregnancy thing. So anyway, as we've got like basically everything out of the way that we need to talk about, let's move on to the main aspect of what makes this story absolutely hilarious. It turns out there is not just one shapeshifting alien. The type of breed of alien shapeshifter here, uh, basically, they always come in pairs, the male and the female. Now, the, they mate, and then the male um, bites a host, which then impregnates them, which is what's happening to Gwen. The issue is, is that the female then comes to collect their child by ripping it out of the human of the human host and killing um, whoever is currently carrying the baby. And the mother shapeshifter is at the wedding, and she is basically um, uh, in the in the scene as. Um, Torture basically learn this and head off to the wedding and it, uh, in an all out basically mental uh, capacity as uh, Gwe, uh, no, Kotishika, sorry, first is the one to notice as um, she starts following um, the, the, this fat man who is uh, one of Reese's friends. Um, they, she keeps getting hit and on by this, um, by the best man who calls himself banana or something like banana and the performances are so corny it's so played up um and it's so clear it's like what his role in the story is and uh we have this alien now the effect is so cartoonish you've got these aliens with these really sharp teeth and they their skin goes black with all the veins and they have these red eyes and the actors are like with their hands like this is that <laughs> it's just so cartoonish um, and the alien then um, goes into the wedding as um, as the baby is as you know as they're getting married you get to the I do's and stuff um, uh, and then of course just like any other wedding every other wedding scene you know this has to happen if you're gonna do a wedding story uh, with aliens and monsters and all that, you're gonna have the scene where the um, the priest is just like, um, uh, uh, if you ever say now why these people should not be married or forever hold your peace, and then 
the main hero walks in. It's like, no, this wedding must be stopped. This wedding must be cancelled. And everybody's thirst thoughts who are not interconnected with the, with the main cast automatically think this person, this man, um, uh, actually is like this secret lover of the, of the bride. And that, um, that happens here with um, Jack. Um, before it's revealed that like um, before this alien creature comes out uh, gets shot and just smashes into the the window as um, uh, Gwen's father is just like you're Torchwood you uh, Gwen was mentioning you and I didn't believe her but now I do you you do actually deal with aliens um, and so the shapeshifter kind of gets away and takes the form of of Reese's mother, as as one of them, uh, goes into um, Gwen and Reese's room as they're talking and basically is panicking and all that. Um, and when Toshika sees um, Reese's mother in uh, outside, the, the the team quickly realizes we've just left her with the alien creature, and so they run up and smash the door down. And Jack just literally goes, uh, get away from her, you bitch, uh, you ugly bitch. And uh, Reese is like, hey, that's my mother. And then it's, they slowly reveal because they can imitate the look, but they can't imitate the smell. Um, does Reese just smash Jack in the face? That was fucking awesome. <laughs> oh, poor John Barrowman. Um, I hope he wasn't too badly I mean they're probably fake but um the scene the emotions of it feel really genuine and they realize that the creature was actually out in the garden as they go chasing after it and you have the the mother now being this alien with the uh with the, the thing on its face and the sharp teeth and the acting and the over topness of it is Bloody ridiculous, and I love it. She held um, Gwen's mother hostage as the torture team are surrounded, and Gwen has got this uh, bouquet in front of her, and she's like, "Leave my mother alone, and you can have me." And uh, she slowly walks to the creature as if like she's uh, going down the aisle. Do you get it? Because we're in the wedding episode, um, and as soon as she jumps, um, she throws um, Gwen's mother. To the floor uh, it turns out that behind the bouquet Gwen has got a handgun and she just shoots the creature uh, believing it uh, they have killed her but it gets away again um, and it's just um, mental uh, we also have like a like I said the scene in which um, Gwen is having this sort of googly eye moment with Jack but it turns out that was actually the shape-shifting alien um, uh, we also learn as well that it doesn't um, has no interest in Owen because um, he has no scent, believing it is some sort of gone off meat. But it didn't kill him at all. It didn't like right. This creature can easily hurt me. Um, you know, it's uh, ridiculous. Um, and the conclusion to this story is easily by far one of the most fun. And just silly and just mental and bonkers scene in Torchwood history. Essentially, um, the Gwen and Ryan, uh, Reese, sorry, Ryan, Reese, um, they basically run out of the building and uh, land in a farm where the mother character, the shape shifting in the form of uh, Reese's mother, comes in. And she has these really hilarious dialogue where she's like, You poor little boy! Um, come to mummy. Uh, you know what we do with bad boys, don't we? She's so over the top. I love it. And Reese is just like, um, he has this device given to him by Owen. The device is actually uh, from Reset. The device which um, Owen was using to get that bug out of, of Martha's stomach. It's a shame that they do a similar thing here. It's kind of... Of repetitive how they use the device in the exact same way although this time it's Reese who doesn't know anything about um, 
how Torchwood really works. Um, so uh, that kind of elevates the scene a bit. But the fact that we have uh, two stories in the same series which end in a very similar way with the exact same uh, uh, weapon is kind of of dull. But anyway, um, they get the baby out with this device and the alien shapeshifter is coming up to uh, Teresa and he, he's just like, I'm fed up of this, I'm fed up of torture, I'm fed up of, of you, you impregnated my wife, you took the form of my mother and I'm just done with you. As he gets this chainsaw and is about to bloody ram it into her face before the, chains, the chainsaw just runs out of energy. And you just have this, oh crap moment before I shit you not this bit is hilarious she bloody explodes and I don't mean like 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 and you have these chunks I mean she is eradicated there is not a trace of her left the alien creature is dead there is no way of returning from that that is just it's that she was absolutely annihilated and you have these Philly like ha ah, ah, ha It's It's hilarious. It's absolutely hilarious. And I still can't process the fact that Phil Ford wrote this. It is absolutely hilarious. Um but anyway. Um uh, it turns out that Jack uh had this special gun which uh, which was more firepower um, and this is the scene which I was on about where he grabs uh, Gwen and they have this some sort of embrace which really implies some sort of of sexual connection there uh, it's really awkward because Reese is there and and I just and like I said I'm not a fan of this element of torture in general that's just my personal opinion um, and then we have like you know the the wedding continuing with the tortured team uh, actually in the in the aisle uh, in the in the seats uh, and then you get the final dance um, and we have that moment where Jack uh, dances with uh, Gwen basically and they googling eye at each other. There's clearly this this hint of romance in there and it is then cut short by. Yanto, who kind of shares it, uh, shares another, uh, shares a dance with Jack on it, and nothing comes of it, despite um, this heavenly relationship between Jack and Yanto. Jack doesn't seem to be in the mood in this particular scene, and it's a real disservice to Yanto, in my opinion, for a character that was gaining this. Um, this development with Jack and this relationship and being one of the few um, same-sex relationships in Doctor Who canon. Um, it is kind of a bummer that this storyline is kind of sidelined for Jack's relationship with with Gwen. Um, and like I said, I'm not particularly keen on that storyline. So I feel like Yanto got a short end of the stick at the end of this episode. Uh, the story gets resolved by the fact that the tortured team basically retcon the entire families and friends of both Gwen and and Reese uh, into them forgetting the fact that they uh, that Gwen was pregnant and there was this alien creature uh, killing people and stuff. Um, and Jack basically off. I love the scene. Jack basically offers. Um, them to be retcon so they can have the memories of a much better wedding but Gwen is like no thank you we we want to keep our memories uh, there's going to be no lies no secrets in this relationship as Jack is like okay as they go off to bed and the tortured team uh, basically um, uh, go on and implant the the memories I especially love the see um, Yanto's little a uh, moment where he's goes, what does he say? He says something like, I love working in, in Torchwood. We've beaten up alien thugs in the day and then in the night we're wedding fairies. That is just um, uh, brilliant. There's also, um, they also mention like uh, the honeymoon and how there's going to be uh, a period where 
Gwen won't be around, so um, uh, will she appear in uh, the next episode of Torchwood? I don't know. We'll have to find out. Um, but that is uh, that is something borrowed. One of the most memorable stories, whether for good or for ill, of the entire series. Um, and I'm so glad I finally got to watch this and I can finally say what I want to say with it. I just wish I had more to say. I'm so boggled by what I witnessed. It's so strange. It's so, such a surreal episode. It generally feels like we are an inch away from a sitcom. It has that, that feeling, that, that silliness, that ridiculousness about it. And for the most part, I think... It's self-aware in a way where you can enjoy it, you can have fun. Sometimes the humour, at least for me, is that the jokes landed so awfully, especially with Toshika and this, uh, this man that basically takes a liking to her. Uh, they land so awfully that they f I find it funny by just how awkward this the scenes are. Like, they're funny in an unintentional way, despite the scene supposedly trying to be funny, if that makes any sense. But, uh, there are some things I don't like about this story. The, the fact that this story um, um, has a big focus on the whole Gwen-Jack relationship thing, which I'm not a fan of. Uh, but again, that's, my more, that's more my personal tastes. Um, I wasn't keen on that. And there's just a few scenes here and there where I'm particularly not a fan of. Uh, but overall, um, if you look stepping back and looking at it at the bigger picture, I feel like this story is a lot of fun and I highly recommend it. You might not enjoy it, you might not like it, but I think you, uh, if you want to get into the series, uh, it's one of those you've got to watch and just experience for yourself. So anyway, that is, um, that is Torchwood, um, something borrowed. So join me next time when uh, Luke goes to school and makes some new friends. However, some of them are not all as they seem. And Sarah Jane has to investigate as an alien race that's familiar to us is being let loose on the school. So join me next time for Revenge of the Slovene. And I'll see you next time on the Doctor Who Marathon. Ta-ra.